Welcome to the Jazz Piano School podcast, where we have one mission, that is to help as many interested people around the world learn and improve at jazz piano by providing structured and organized jazz piano education. I'm your host, as always, Brendan Lowe, and thank you so much for joining me. This is the YouTube tutorial on Podcast 86 going over the McCoy Tyner fourth voicings. If you're looking for the full podcast, simply go to jazzpianoschool.com. And if you want the practice materials with the fourth voicings notation, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 86. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So what we are doing here is we are going to be going over the McCoy Tyner fourth voicings. Now we're going to be doing minor, dominant, and major sevens. All right. And again, there's a typical kind of structure one and structure two. So here is structure two. Now, if you are interested, again, in getting these written out, notated, just go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 86. You can download the notation for the voicings I'm showing you, and you can download the variation I'm going to show you as well. Okay. So here is structure one. This is for a C minor seventh voicing. We have one, four, seven, three, five. Okay, one, four, seven, three, five. That's going to be structure one. This gives us a, a pretty much a fourth voicing all the way up until this third on top. Right? But if we stayed with all fourths, that A flat, right, is going to be kind of, um, I mean, although it is usable. G is more of a neutral color, kind of over a minor seventh sound, like uh, a Dorian. So, for example, in a two-five-one. Not to say you can't use that. By all means, you can use that, and a lot of different modes um, have that flat six in there or flat thirteen. I'm not going to be going over that today, but again, the standard McCoy Tyner voicing that you'll hear about in all different books, YouTube tutorials, this one as well, is going to be one, four, seven, three, and five. Okay. Now, the other structure is going to be five, one, four, seven, three on top. Now this is an all fourth voicing. As you can see, we have all fourths, right? Again, so we have five, one, four, seven, three. Now again, this is for C minor, and then we have structure one, okay? I usually like to voice this with two notes and a triad two notes and a triad okay some people might do this uh it, it this isn't something i ever uh, voiced but it's definitely doable however you want to voice it um i take this approach triad in my left hand excuse me in my right hand dyad in my left hand now what can we do with these well we can move these up and down our mode so our mode is going to be our dorian mode And again, if you don't know what that is, simply kind of go back through the podcast. You can learn it. I'm not going to go into detail here, but we're going to be using the notes from our Dorian mode to move our fourth voicing up and down. Now we're going to keep this exact same structure. Okay. So I'm going to have this third on the top. That's going to be moving up and all of our notes are simply moving up that scale. Okay. See this. Now again, people will be like, well, what notes are you using? Well, all I'm doing is I'm moving every single degree up that Dorian mode. So my C moves to my D, my F moves to my G, right? B flat moves to C, E flat moves to F, and G to A. So everything stays, this, this, this texture here stays, or a shape I should say, stays, and we just move it up and down the mode. Okay? And that's it. That, that's how to take structure one. So if you hear these movements, you might hear people moving fourths, right? But you might have only learned structure one and structure two. So it's like, oh, what are they playing? Well, they could be moving uh, up and down the mode, just like you saw. So, whoops, sorry. Stuff like that, right? Um, now, the variation on this that I like to use as well is going to be the natural 13 on top instead of the 5, okay? So we have 1, 4, 7, 3, 13, right? Now, we're going to do the same exact thing, and we're going to move it up the Dorian mode. Now, 
Now, if you see here, what voicing did we just hit? We hit structure two. So if you notice this structure, right? You might, be, again, this is how I learned it too. So I kind of know the process of learning these. So you might go onto a, a website or a video or a tutorial, or learn these from a teacher. And they might say, okay, here's structure one, here's structure two. Now practice those through the, you know, through all the keys, right? And so I did that in my learning career. And then I would just know these two voicings, but I never really know how to move them through the mode, right? To create some movement, which is a really nice thing to do. So structure two, if we start on the root on the bottom, right? And start in kind of in first position, I guess, from starting from the root up and we put the A here, this is going to account or move up to structure two. Excuse me. Right, so here's structure two. And then we continue up and then back down, right? Okay. So that is how you can move that sequence up and down. Now that is your minor seventh, your dominant seventh. All we're going to do, you know, what's actually quite funny is that these minor voicings can be used and the movements can be used over a dominant chord as well. So you don't have to change or practice anything different. It's the great part about it. When we use a C minor standard structure one voicing and the bass player is playing an F or you hit an F, this gives you a dominant sound and specifically a sus sound over that F chord. And that's what creates that kind of McCoy sound. Right, because you're playing a sus uh, voicing as opposed to a regular dominant voicing with the third in there. Right, you have the uh, sus four, excuse me, right here, the B flat, instead of playing the third. Okay, now you can still move up your chords just like we practiced, right? It's going to create that sus sound. Now, if you just specifically like these, some of these notes are going to create different uh, voicings over that F chord. Like for this example, we don't have the seven. We don't have the uh, sus four in there. We only have the three root five, nine and 13. So this creates more of an F six sound. So what I'm trying to say is some of these voicings will create different types of sounding chords, but ultimately you can move the voicing up and down. When you get to the next one, it's going to bear more of the color of the chord rather than those kind of in between chords. You see what I'm saying? So here's the sus chord. Here's more of an F six kind of vague chord F 13. Here's more of an F dominant chord. We have our shells in the bottom, then we have some extensions up here. We actually have the sus uh, note up here on the top, which kind of serves as more of an extension. Even though you have this clash, it still works. I love that sound, actually. I love having the sus, uh, the four and the three in the chord. I, th I think it's a beautiful sound, right? And then you continue up. And again, some of these are gonna be less, like in this chord, for example, we only have the shells and they're on opposite sides of each other in the voicing. So that, you know, if you're just comping using that specific voicing, I wouldn't recommend that. So I would use this more as movement, right? When if you want to get some movement in, moving back and forth, but be sure to kind of focus your comping on that initial structure that I told you about or the other structure too, right? Um, which you can also use over the F chord, right? We can use structure two and we can start it down here as well, right? Here's structure two, moving up, right? So that's what it would sound like with the F in the bass. Oops, sorry, that's structure one. Uh, where am I? Right, and so, so on and so forth. So. That's for your dominant chord, okay? Now for your major chords, uh, again, it's kind of the same principle, but anyway, here is your typical fourth voicing for your major structure one. You have the third, the six, the nine, the five, and the seven on top. And if I play a C in the bass or a fifth, 
there is your typical voicing, right? Kind of your fourth structure one voicing. Now, structure two voicing is going to be, uh, again, with seven, three, kind of six or 13, nine, and five, right? So here's structure two. If I play it down here, it's going to be a little too low, but you can hear the difference. Here's structure one, structure two. All right, so that's for your major seventh. Now, can you move these voicings up and down through your major seventh mode, your Ionian mode? Yes, absolutely. But you still have, you still face kind of the uh, problem, or not problem necessarily, but the the fact of the matter is you need to focus your attention on playing mainly the, the structures I just showed you because as we move these up diatonically, right, they're going to create different colors excuse me, in your, you know, in your sound. For example, right when I move to the next chord, this is much less of a C major 7 chord, right? So we have F, right, and a C major 7, that's going to be the 4, we get the 7, the 3rd, the 13, and the 1. So we're starting with the 4 on the bottom, which is very strange, right, for a major 7 voicing. And it sounds like that. Now if I resolve it, as you can hear, it sounds perfectly fine, right? So all you need to do is really focus on kind of resolving it somehow. That That's not really a resolution per se, but, right? You don't even have the third in here. <clears throat> so you kind of just need to be conscious. That's more for advanced players, intermediate to advanced, who want to use more movements. Um, you can get away with that, but again, you want to sort of resolve it. And not necessarily all the time do you need to play all fourths. I might play a voicing like this, but then resolve it to a major voicing. Something like that, right? So I might start with a fourth voicing. Sorry. You know, something like that. So you can use all the diatonic movement, but I would just say, again, you kind of need to resolve it back into the main functionality of the chord somehow in order to incorporate that movement without it sounding too out, you know, or sounding like you're not playing the harmonies anymore. And uh, so again, uh, with this voicing, uh, like structure two in the minor voicing, right? We had structure two here. We could start structure two on the, on the root of the mode. We can do the same thing with the major seven voicing, right? So instead of this, if we move down here, right, or excuse me, here, if we start here and, and shift our top note up to C, if we move this up diatonically, right, this will bring us to structure two, which is right there. So we can shift structure two all the way down, right? And so here is starting with the root on the bottom. That would be kind of like your, your first step if you wanted to start, you know, with the root on the bottom. And again, you can shift those up diatonically, right? So that creates, that walks up to structure two. So here's, again, structure one. If you want to move to structure two, that will go here. And again, you can shift those around up and down diatonically to uh, create your comping voicing. So that is the, the McCoy <coughs> Tyner uh, tutorial. Just simple, right? Down and dirty. Here it is. Practice it, right? A nice little break from the reharm. Again, if you want to get the movements I talked about so you can see them on a piece of paper, notated and uh, read them up and down, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 86. And I will see you in the next episode. Happy practicing.